Hi class, welcome to Theology and to the uh, to the Lewis workbook, uh, where we're going to be looking at thinking for ourselves on how to understand what the Scripture says, and it kind of teaches us to do that, and kind of gives us a guide to do that, and gives us a theological topics where we can understand those things a little bit better. Uh, we're looking in the first chapter, uh, general revelation, and. Uh, just a little explanation of general revelation for you that uh, maybe exceeds what's in the workbook and gives you a little more information about that to maybe help you. Um, how do we discover God's will and mind about life in the world? How do we do that? Uh, and, and we're going to look at several ways. Um, we do it through revelation, how God has revealed his heart and his mind to us. So, what is Revelation? That may be something you want to know. It's not the book of Revelation, but it is an unveiling of something hidden so it can be seen and known for what it is. That's like the disclosure or taking away the covering of something so that it can be seen as it actually is. So, uh, you know, if you've got something covered up, like you've seen maybe unveiling of a statue, where someone has created a statue and they've got it covered up and they have a big ceremony where they unveil it. Then they unveil the statue in the middle of a town square and that's kind of that's kind of revelation. They're revealing that statue. So that's the idea of revelation. Now the Bible contains some revelation. The Bible is revelation, but much of the Bible is not necessarily revealed. Uh, but was things that could be known by anyone, like eyewitness accounts, first-hand accounts, for example, are not necessarily revelation. Uh, but revelation can also be thought of as a communication from God. So God's word to us through the Bible is in a broad sense a revelation to us, but not in the narrow sense of the definition that I just gave you. Um, so let's talk a little bit specifically about general revelation. And then chapter two in our textbook is about special revelation. So general revelation is general in two senses. Okay. I've got it up on the board for you. And so I'm kind of mind mapped it for you. I don't know how well you can see this, but, uh, talking about general revelation. So the first thing we have are the two senses of general revelation. First, it is available to all, okay? It's available to all. It is universal. Mankind as a whole has access to this revelation. Secondly, God's revelation is general. General revelation is general, the word general, in the sense that it is general knowledge. It provides men with general knowledge about God, not specific knowledge. It's kind of a generic monotheism is illustrated by it. So this general revelation is going to illustrate that there is a God. For example, uh, we're going to talk about the types in a minute. For example, if you look at uh, something at creation and you think and you realize that it has to be some kind of intelligent being that created that. Uh, that is what it's talking about. It kind of reveals a general monotheism. Some intelligent being is out there, but we don't really know much more about it than it is an intelligent supernatural being. So that's monotheism. That can be the Jewish God, the Islamic God, um, the Christian God, any kind. So it's not necessarily specifically the Christian God. Now there's a couple types of, revel of general revelation. And the types are God's revelation in creation. Up there. God's revelation in creation. God has left his fingerprints all over creation. Traits of God are seen everywhere in creation. And that's going to be, you're going to have a verse that you're going to be looking at in the workbook, Romans 1, 18 through 20, where his power and deity are evident. Again, but it's a power and deity of a supernatural being 
not necessarily a Christian or even Jewish or even a pagan God, but it's revealed in creation. Secondly, second type is God's revelation in our conscience, in man's conscience. We understand the moral law that has been implanted within us, and that's from Romans 2, 14, which again is a verse in your textbook that you're going to be studying. So we uh, understand that God's moral law has been implanted within us. And therefore, if it's been implanted within us, what are we? We are responsible for the demands of God's moral law. So as bearers of God's image, his moral values are within us and a part of us, and we are therefore responsible for that moral law and to, and to behave correctly according to it. Then we're going to look at the functions of general revelation. The functions of general revelation, there's two of those. Function of generation, the first one is to show forth God's glory. Psalm 19, 1. The heavens declare the glory of God. It's going to show forth God's glory to the whole world. The heavens declare the glories of God. And it also, secondly, serves to make people responsible or culpable before God. Culpable has a little stronger connotation than responsible. Culpable means that we've done something wrong and we are responsible for it. You can be responsible maybe without necessarily doing something wrong, but, but culpable has the idea of something being done wrong. And so, therefore, we are without excuse. And so what this does, general revelation removes any excuse for unbelief. Okay? So, the ultimate question is, can general revelation provide a saving knowledge of God? And that's going to be a question you're going to pursue a little bit in this first chapter, and then we'll look more about it when we go to the second chapter of special revelation. So, that's just a little background for you on general revelation. Maybe just to give you some ideas to help you think through those scenarios that are presented in the, in the workbook. So be sure to do your assignments, do them consecutively, just follow along. Be diligent to look up those verses. It won't take you very long to do. And a couple of students were concerned as I was explaining the workbook on Wednesday that uh, that, that seemed like a lot of work. We're, going to, we're not going to do a workbook chapter in one day. So everything I said on Wednesday is not going to be done in one day. We're going to stretch it out over several days to do a workbook chapter. And so we're going to take our time with it because I want you to get used to trying to understand what the Bible says and what it means and to be able to interpret it for yourself. Okay? So thanks, guys. Thanks for listening. And uh, you do work hard over the weekend. I will see you on Monday. Okay? Oh, see you tomorrow for chapel. Okay? Bye.